Super excited to add another country to the list. It's time to say goodbye to Vietnam. I lived here three wonderful months and today I'm starting a moving journey to another country. All my life I just moved from one place to another. This luggage is huge, it's like 30 kilograms. The airlines even put a special tag for like heavy luggage. And the thing is that one year ago I left my home having only this. Living home is too much to say. I have a different understanding of a home. Like my home is any place I'm staying at the moment. I left my Vietnamese home today, soon I will arrive to my Singaporean home, which is not the final destination for this trip. I'm here for a short transit, but still, I feel home here. Luggage is killing me. What can I say? It's a nice room. Bit expensive, last time I visited Singapore like half a year ago and I was staying in a hostel. It was the most expensive hostel in my life, $50 a night. This hotel is like two and a half times more expensive than a hostel, but that's much nicer. I like traveling. I like the idea of traveling, of getting from one place to another, experiencing new culture, meeting new people. And I like the process of traveling, like getting from point A to point B, taking flights or spending longer time traveling by train or by bus. But moving from one place to another is different. I love the idea of living in different places, changing my homes every couple of months or years. But I hate the process of moving from one place to another and carrying like all the stuff that I gathered during all this time. If I had to choose only one thing to show you in Singapore, that would be local experience of having food. And Chinatown is simply the best place for that. Meet KK and Justin. They are two lovely and a little shy locals who invited me for a breakfast. We ate at Toast Box. Think of it as McDonald's or Starbucks, but Singaporean style. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's enough. That's enough. And then you just break, uh, break this. Yeah, okay, well done. So this one is half boiled egg, and I have tried it before. But the way that KK tells me to eat this is very unique. I haven't paid attention that local people actually do eat. I have to like slurp it. <laughs> mm. That is the funniest way you can eat an egg. <laughs> so this one is more like Indian style. This one is uh, peanut butter. And this one is kaya. Kaya, yeah. Toast, kaya toast. Kaya toast. And this one is Thanks to Justin and KK, they treated me a quintessential Singaporean breakfast, which is greatly influenced by other cultures. The eggs remind me of China, curry and roti are so Indian, and these peanut toast and kaya toast are kinda southern Chinese too. And this style of coffee origins in Malaysia. After the breakfast, we had a walk around the neighborhood and KK explained me the concept of hawker centers. It's like a food center or a food court. They are the most affordable places to eat in Singapore. I had a fair portion of meals in hawker centers, but I will keep this story for another video about Singapore. Now it's time to continue our moving journey.
just drive to Qatar and noticed one thing straight away. Most of people who are taking the same flight from me, from Singapore to Qatar, they are heading to transfers desks, like literally, I don't know, 90-95% of people, at least as long as I see all around me, they are heading to transfer desks that are located exactly in front of the plane's exit. Interesting. I wonder how many people are actually visiting Qatar as tourists. Is it any popular? We're gonna explore it today and tomorrow and during the next four days. They must be kidding, like 18 minutes. Wow. I cannot believe it's so quiet here, like literally no single soul around me going to the immigration. I even doubt myself, like, am I heading the right direction or not? But the sign says the baggage claim is over there, so just keep going. I just got outside of the airport with my taxi, Uber, and it's super hot here. I think it's literally the hottest place I've ever been during like last couple of years. Talking about the weather here, it's hot and I'm literally the only stupid person staying under open sun right now. No hat, no shade. I'm not gonna stay here any longer. I'm gonna seek shade and stay next to the camera. The building behind me is National Museum of Qatar. And that is one of very few things that I actually can explore while like during the day, so better in the shade. It's like, it's the very first time for me to experience desert climate super dry, super hot. Today is 46 degrees Celsius. It's so hot that I literally start to cry when I go outdoors and I stay under open sun during this weather. I'm not gonna stay long under this open sun, just show you around and hide somewhere. crazy, but this one is air conditioning. I literally can feel with my legs the cold air coming through these holes and from over there and from over there all the way down the street once again. Over there, over there. This AC doesn't really have much effect, like it's super hot <laughs> on the street right now, but it's kind of pleasant to walk past these AC holes and I've never seen it anywhere in the world before. Did you notice that I'm the only person in the streets? Daytime is not for walking the city here. So most of my daytime I spent indoors. Specifically this day I was signing and sending postcards to my dear Patreon and YouTube supporters. Just got to Qatar Post headquarters to send 16 postcards around the world to people who support me on Patreon and YouTube memberships. And this place is grand, really nice headquarters, except one thing. I'm not getting any beautiful stamps to put on the postcards, which is I typically get like anywhere around the world. In Qatar instead, they have such kind of um, stickers saying international mail that I put on the postcard. Now it's down to Qatar Post to deliver it around the world and I'm gonna go explore a little bit more of capital of Qatar. So once the sun was finally gone, I headed to Sokwa Kif, a popular walking district full of old-style buildings, cafes, restaurants and absolutely random shops. Only in this place I actually saw crowds of people, literally everywhere else that was rather empty. interesting thing is that it's like air conditioners all around here. The cats hang out around them and I'm not sure if it's working actually. No, this one is not working. That one is not working. Is it working here? Oh, that's working here. <laughs> yeah, have a good night. They literally AC in the street just like 
this. The only thing I want now is just find a place to have a tea. No matter it's ice or hot, just a tea in an AC place. <laughs> That's super hot here. Thank you. There are two absolutely best things around me right now. First of all, this cup, this teapot, and this AC tower. Just, just look at this. It's a game really tiny cup for tea and a giant pile of sugar. It's like I'm not here alone, but there's like 20 Nikki to destroy this sugar. Time to continue the journey. It's been a very nice time in this area of Doha. Now, quite late, I'm gonna take the subway back to the hotel and see you tomorrow in Tbilisi, Georgia. So, Tbilisi, Georgia. It's actually my second time here. I visited here one year ago together with Lisa during summer. It was an amazing tree, but because of the weather, I thought that maybe it's not the place where I would like to live for a longer time. But then I met people, I talked to people, and decided to give Tbilisi the second try. This neighborhood is super interesting. I'm staying here on top of Tbilisi and I can see the view on the entire city. Although the stairs leading me here a little bit killing me. Anyway, I'm not sure how long I will stay in Tbilisi, but I have a clear objective right now. I need to find an apartment to rent. Then I want to meet my dissident friends and maybe make videos with them. I also want to explore like the ways how I can bring my mom here. What is the best possible timing for doing so? And the last objective after that is I want to film a Q&A video. It's been almost exactly one year since the day I quit Russia and oh man, a lot of things happened during this year. I actually have a brilliant idea how we can do the Q&A without me painstakingly choosing the questions. By the way, I use this word painstakingly first time in my life. Anyway, go click that super thanks button and give anything, let's say a dollar, a rupee, a lari, which is Georgian money. And whoever is going to do that, I'll reply your question, no matter what it is, guaranteed. And then I'll spoil myself with delicious Georgian wine and himkali and some other local food. Actually, I don't have to wait to spoil myself with local food. Let's go have a lunch. Hello. Do you have some um, himkali? Yes, and we wine. Have, yes, 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 uh, we have a homemade and uh, it's red wine. Yeah, red wine. So among all the choices, I wanted to try local Hinkali, this kind of local style dumplings. And I really like the way you're gonna eat this Hinkali dumpling. Basically, you don't need any fork, no spoons. You just take it with your bare hands using this Hinkali tail. I don't know how to actually say that. And then you take a bite, careful, because inside there might be some kind of like bouillon, like soup bouillon. And for the second bite, you finish it off. It's been a while since I had any wine. But here in Georgia, I can do nothing but just have this glass and say cheers to you. So yeah, my toast is to the world, like let the world be okay. Well guys, that was an amazing dinner with delicious hinkali, delicious wine, feeling a bit tipsy after the glass of wine. So I guess I'm gonna go give myself a week to look for an apartment. And I'm gonna see you right after that. For you, it's gonna be just two seconds. <laughs> Oh, I found the apartment, but not showing you that yet. It's a one-bedroom apartment for $650 a month. This journey from Dalat to Tbilisi took me eight days since the day I said goodbye to my friends in Dalat, which was quite a tough thing to do. It is the very last day in Dalat for me after living here for almost three months. And the last place I'm visiting is a tiny Italian coffee shop slash restaurant. My friend Nog works here and I often come here for playing some chess.
And the most challenging thing about this journey was me not being able to post content weekly. And I thought that I got over this mindset that I have to consistently posting and posting stuff, but apparently it still bothers me. Still, I'm gonna keep uploading videos in my own pace. Talking about other challenging thing about this journey, the heat in Qatar was difficult. The humidity in Singapore was challenging as well, as well as the reality of being in Tbilisi. I think that is the closest that reminds me life in St. Petersburg, which is a really great period of my life. Overall, I'm feeling good coming to Georgia. That is definitely a different experience after a year of living in Asia, and also enjoy having this new apartment that I'm gonna call home for the next several months. I'm going to shop for some things for my new home, and meanwhile, go drop a question for our upcoming Q&A video. Спасибо, and пока!